Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Pencil Stash. I'm Rachel. And last week, I put it out to you guys to see what you might want me to cover in the next video. Would you like to learn a new technique or do a coloring page? And the results were pretty split, kind of right down the middle. So I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of both. So stick around. But first, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 28,000 classes in design, art, business, and much, much more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes, communities, and workshops that are just right for you and your learning goals. They have classes on painting, creative writing, photo editing, even sewing. So if you want to improve your knowledge on any topic, Skillshare has a class for you. So join the more than 7 million students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for Pencil Stash viewers. Be one of the first 500 people to use the link below in the description to get a two month free trial. Now beyond those two months, Skillshare is super affordable with an annual subscription being less than $10 per month. And with all the growth potential that these classes offer, this is a good investment in yourself and your personal development. Act now for this special offer and start learning with Skillshare today. Today, we're gonna to be coloring the Sea Serpent Double Spread from Mythomorphia. Now, I love this page. In fact, I love all the pages in this book, but on this one, I'm very drawn to the moon. And I think it's unique because it isn't just kind of hanging there in the background, it's hanging right in front of the serpent's mouth in 3D, just as like the sea serpent just kind of jumped up out of the water and is about to swallow it whole. So with that kind of being the standout on the page, I think we should do just that. I think we should make it stand out. And I wanna make this thing glow, like really glow. Now I've played around a little bit with like that moon glow kind of in the past, but I've never really went for it. You know what I mean? So today, I'm gonna go for it and I'm really gonna try to make our moon glow. Now I'm gonna use a few colors here, but for the ring kind of around the outer edge of the moon, I want to be the brightest. So I'm going to be using these two little nubby colors here. Uh, this is my Prismacolor Cream and my Prismacolor White. And you might wonder why I'm using a white pencil if you can't even see it on the page. And while that's mostly true, um, I do like to lay down a layer of white in areas that I wanna be kind of very milky, very light, uh, because it does still lay down a layer of either wax or oil, you know, depending on you know what your uh, pencil brand is, um, which allows the other colors that you lay down either on top of it or adjacent to it still interact with that medium. And I'm just gonna lay these colors down kind of haphazardly, a little sloppily. They're both incredibly light and I'm using a very light hand. Um, and again, I'm gonna be using some other colors kind of in those crater areas. So this is really just to give, you know, a little bit of that flat moon surface, just a little bit of dimension uh, with some color. Um, so you don't have to be too careful here. Next, I'll use some putty beige, and this is just going to sort of be my in-between color, kind of my mid-tone color, that'll just kind of bridge that gap as I go towards darker colors in the crater areas. So this one, I'm just gonna kind of focus on some of those um, you know, areas that are kind of like mostly out of the crater, you know, might have some light hitting them, um, you know, but again, it's just gonna kind of bridge that gap between the light areas and the dark areas. And now we're gonna work our way towards those darker colors. So I've chosen to use some French grays um, kind of in the darker um, end of the spectrum, uh, starting with our 70%. And I chose the French grays simply because they have a little bit of kind of a brown tone to them. And I thought that it would just kind of complement nicely. You can also use, you know, the cool tones here. You know, the, the moon is supposed to be cold. So, you know, it would have worked, you know, just fine. It gives a little bit of like a blue undertone. So either the French or the cool, whichever you prefer. And then I'm gonna actually go back in with my white, just to kind of act as my blender here a little bit, just kind of, I'm gonna go over, you know, some of those areas that I kind of, you know, put in those darker spots, just to blend it out a little bit, you know, make it a little bit more milky, you know, just give it a little bit more glow. Um, you know, this is, again, it's gonna add that uh, either wax or oil, um, you know, over top of that. So it's going to interact with um, the colored, you know, pigment that's already there, and it's just gonna kind of bring everything all together. Moving on to the night sky, I'm gonna try to create that halo or that glow coming off of our moon. 
So I'm going to take this super light kind of grayish lavender to start, and I'm just going to create some very light rings of color about half an inch away from the surface of our moon. Just kind of careful to leave that alone for now. And I am doing just kind of very linear strokes. You know, I'm not I'm not filling in an area. I'm not, you know, doing my my squigglies. I'm just kind of using just some, you know, very, very linear, um, you know, kind of curved uh, shapes around around the moon for now. And once you're happy with that, I'm going to do almost the exact same thing with my slate gray. And again, I'm using just a very, very light hand here. I'm just kind of going to go in, you know, fill in some of those areas that I left white um, in between the grayed uh, lavender. And I'm just going to, again, just kind of create those very linear, very curved uh, strokes, very light hand. It's all going to blend out later, um, you know, but I really just kind of want that kind of kind of glow, you know, a little bit of color, you know, just a little bit, um, you know, kind of playing off the surface of the moon. And back to white. I'm actually going to pull this out and I am going to fill in that area, you know, in between the surface of the moon and then where we uh, either started the gray lavender or that blue slate color, um, just to, again, put down that layer of either wax or oil, depending on your pencil. And I'm just going to kind of blend the area where there's, you know, to meet, you know, the blank white paper and those colors, this is just going to kind of blend and soften, you know, just to give it again, that like little milky uh, haze, it's going to really sell the fact that this is that glowing moon. Now I'm going to work in a gradient kind of outward towards the you know edges of the sky. So starting with uh, the areas close to the moon, I'm going to pull out this, um, the sky blue light. And again, it's just going to sort of go um, you know, overlapping those areas of the slate gray and the gray lavender that we just put down. It's going to just kind of bridge that gap, kind of start us on our path of that gradient uh, towards where the sky starts from, you know, the glowing moon uh, outward to where it's going to get super dark. And you can put this down in just kind of those regular, um, you know, circular strokes now, just very, very light pressure. We're going to do a lot of layering here. So definitely use light pressure and, uh, you know, just kind of maybe, maybe about an inch, maybe about an inch and a half, um, you know, outwards from the moon there uh, with this sky blue light. And I am trying to work in kind of a relatively circular shape. I don't want it to be too regular to where it looks, you know, like I used a pattern. But, you know, I want it to kind of be equidistant, um, you know, so that all of the colors kind of radiate off of the moon um, in kind of uh, very symmetrical um, circles. And again, I'm going to be layering a ton here. So I'm going to go back in with my cream, just a great color to kind of sell again, that glow. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go over uh, the areas of that sky blue light. I'm just layering and very, very, very light pressure. You don't want it to read yellow. You just kind of want that blue to be kind of tinged with the cream color. For our next kind of ring in the gradient, we're actually going to go back in and use that slate gray. And I'm going to be overlapping uh, that blue light sky blue what is that color called yeah you know what I mean the one that I just used that kind of baby blue color I'm going to be overlapping where that was just to kind of bridge those two so that they just flow effortlessly from one to the other um, and then outward about another inch uh, to an inch and a half now back over top of our slate gray, again, with our grayed lavender. I just loved how these two kind of balance each other out. They're very uh, complimentary. Um, you know, if you just used blues here, it would just, you know, it would be great, but it would just be blues. But, you know, if you're adding in those lavenders and those creams and, you know, really, really making it kind of varied, it just looks a lot more natural, a lot more interesting and a lot more dynamic. I'm loving the tones that our grade lavender uh, is adding to our night sky. So I'm actually going to bump it up just a touch and go a tad bit darker and kind of more saturated with this lilac color. And again, we're just layering the crap out of this thing. Uh, but with very, very light pressure, it's, it shouldn't read purple. It should just read kind of very, um, you know, kind of galaxy colors, you know, slate grays and purples and blues and blacks. It, it's, 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 it's all going to work together. Trust me. Switching gears now with switching pencils, we're actually going to take out one of our favorite castells and we're going to use one of my favorite, favorite colors. This is Prussian blue and it's still very navy, but it's also still just very, very vibrant blue. So we're just going to kind of, you know, go away from those purples a little bit. And we're just going to kind of start to add in a little more of those true blue colors that I think will bridge that gap between kind of that glow, um, you know, the lavenders and then the very, very dark colors that we'll be getting to at the outer edges. So we're going to add another ring to our gradient here. 
Uh, about another inch or so remember to you know kind of keep it keep it consistent you know just so that it looks like it's you know about the same you know equidistant all the way around the moon but don't make it too um unnatural looking you know not too precise now we're going to add another ring to our gradient. Uh, this is dark indigo. It's another Faber Castell. It just lays down super, super smooth, very, very nice, you know, saturated color. And we're going to layer this right over top of the Prussian blue, just kind of tone down, you know, that true blue, uh, you know, tone that it has. We don't want to cover it up. You know, we just want to complement it, um, and that'll also help just kind of bridge that gap into the next ring, which will, you know, primarily just be just the indigo. But on this one, I don't want you to just do another inch and a half or so like we were doing before. I'm actually doing the entire rest of the page in this. And the reason that I do this, even though I know I'm going to be adding other dark colors, I like to lay down just kind of a nice foundational layer of kind of my darkest color. So even though the edges are going to be either gray or black, I don't want it to be just true gray or true black. I want that blue or that purple to still kind of kind of shine through from underneath. You know, it should be part of the layers. So just like a foundational layer of this dark indigo, which will be, again, the foundation that we will build everything else upon. And here's how it came out. It's a little rough, you know, just because, you know, just kind of putting down that foundational layer. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be layering so many colors on top of it. Um, but I did try to have kind of the left side of the page be a bit darker than the right side of the page simply because it was going to be further away from the moon. So I thought, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not glow from the center of the page, it's glow from the moon. So again, I just wanted a little bit more darkness on the left side and I left a little bit more, you know, just kind of a lighter layer, a little bit more room to play with on the right side. And we can tweak it as we go. Now I'm gonna start layering on top of that indigo. And I'm gonna first do so with warm gray 70%. And you might be wondering why I chose warm gray. Uh, first, I used French gray on the moon, um, and then I even kind of made the comment that, you know, the, the the cool tones would probably work here, especially with the blues and the purples that we've already added. But I purposely went kind of in the opposite spectrum with the warm, just because, again, I wanted the sky to be very, very multidimensional. I thought that the gray might blend in like a little bit too much and just be a little bit too one note. I kind of wanted there to be, you know, just just a bit of of difference there. So I took a chance and went with the warm grays. And now what I'm doing here is I'm just adding this in, kind of just to build up, again, those layers on top, um, you know, to kind of work through our gradient. So while I'm starting fairly close to the moon, I'm also using very, very light pressure. And I'm just going to kind of work my way around, um, you know, just with the 70% for now, just to kind of start to build up a little bit of that darkness, you know, just sort of where that glow kind of starts to fade. And now I really want to deepen it with uh, warm gray 90%. And, you know, it's just kind of that next level up from the 70, just to kind of, again, start to deepen all of these tones uh, to where our sky would be just super, super dark. And I'm going to do that uh, with both the 70% and the 90%, kind of working my way, you know, around the entire page, kind of switching off between the two, you know, just to, just to kind of have them in your hands and, uh, you know, decide where's the best placement for each color. Now up in the corners here where it's just kind of wide open, you know, space and there really isn't, you know, any other, you know, coloring things to, you know, kind of mask or hide, you know, some of those transition areas, just use super, super light pressure. It'll help to mask those transition areas. Um, you know, again, you can always come back in and go a little bit darker if you want to, but I just like to, you know, make sure that I'm staying very, very light in these areas that are a little bit less forgiving than, uh, you know, some of the other areas. Now, I loved what the lilac and that grayed lavender did so much for just like the, the, the tone and the interest of our page that I'm actually going to go and use a little bit of the black raspberry in with our darker shades. So kind of use the, the light lavender in with the lighter areas, the lilac with the mid-tones, and then I'm going to use the black raspberry to act as that purple in with the darker tones. So I'm actually not going to use this... Um, in just kind of a, a fill capacity or like a layering capacity, I'm actually going to go in and kind of make like little little Milky Way streams with this. You just to give it a little bit more, um, 
um, illusion that it's the night sky, you know, maybe you are kind of seeing some of that galaxy, you know, Milky Way kind of look to it. Um, so I'm just kind of creating little little streams, little threads, um, you know, which I, actually kind of reminds me of uh, what I did with the with the mermaid pages, um, you know, just like very, very nice little threads that I'll blend out later. And it'll just kind of mimic mimic that galaxy look. A bit of true black at the corners. Um, yeah, I didn't want to use too much black and certainly not dark uh, because we're going to be blending this out a little bit in a minute. Um, but again, I just wanted it to really, really be dark at the edges so that that moon glow just kind of pops in the center. So I'm just kind of using this at the edges and I'm just being very, very light handed with it. Now I've been liking Gamsol a whole lot lately. Really, really like this stuff. It's just a great blending medium, but it's kind of playing around with the idea of maybe testing out a paintbrush um, on this application just to see what it would do, see if it was a little bit different than the than the Q-tips that I've been using. And of course, I only have a watercolor brush, so I don't know if this is the right brush to use, but this is the one that I'm going to try. Um, and I did kind of try to, you know, get as much of the Gamsol off of the bristles as possible just to kind of see what it would do. Again, you can always add more later, but it's really, really hard to take it off if you're being a little bit too, too wet with it. It'll, it'll get a little funky. So I'm just kind of using, um, you know, the bristles just to get the Gamsol on there. And then I'm kind of using the edge of the uh, bottle just to get the, get the excess off. And then I'm, again, going on a paper towel to get the excess off. Again, you can always add more later, but I like to be a little bit uh, a little bit frugal with it. And I'm just gonna try to kind of isolate this in certain areas just to test it, because I don't know what it's gonna do on the paintbrush. See what it, like an immediate difference that makes? I mean, you can just kind of, that, that one little area that I did this on is just really, really standing out, you know, against all of the other areas. So it's amazing what, what, what the Gamsol can do to really brighten up and, and liven up those colors. Our sky looked kind of gray before, right? Now it looks super, super dark. Now in the larger areas, I was actually kind of struggling with the paintbrush. Um, like it was just kind of hard to kind of really, really get you know all of those um, lines very, very blended out. It, it was still just kind of looking like like pencil strokes when I was using the paintbrush. So I decided to switch to the Q-tip because I can use the circular strokes and it kind of disguises my pencil marks a little bit better. So switch into the Q-tip. And it might look wet, but there's very, very, very little Gamsol actually on my Q-tip, but it just goes a long, long way. So I'm just using very circular strokes just to blend all these colors together. And I'm trying to keep them really, really tight circular strokes. I don't want to bring my blacks towards my slate blues, if that makes sense. I would rather bring my slate blues towards my blacks, just so that I'm not muddying up all of the kind of careful attention that we put into building our gradient. And when I get close to those light colors, I'm actually switching ends of my Q-tip or switching Q-tips uh, entirely just so that I can have a nice clean tip because again, I don't want any of that pigment, that dark, dark pigment to get in the areas that I want to stay nice and bright and light. So you, know, you might need to switch it out a little bit, but they actually go a long way. I usually only use like two or three, you know, Q-tips, you know, for a step like this. Um, so, you know, when you have a thousand, it, it, it really doesn't make a big impact. We really like how it's turning out down here. Just the way that that uh, blue kind of builds in towards that, towards that purpley black. Oh, it's looking so good. This makes me very, very happy. And I'm gonna switch back to my paintbrush for these kind of really tight areas. My Q-tip is good, but it doesn't get into those like just super, super small tight spaces uh, like, it, like I can get with my paintbrush. And when it's done, it looks like this. And I'm really, really liking it, but I am noticing just a little bit of kind of a wonky glow in that upper right hand corner. You see how it's just kind of like not equidistant with, you know, the rest of the glowy area. Um, so I'm going to go back in with some of my dark grays and just again, try to soften one, that kind of harsh transition line that I'm seeing. And two, just kind of, again, build that build that dark sky just so that our glow is very equidistant around the moon. So even after you blend with the Gamsol, you can go back in with your pencils over top and, you know, fix some of the mistakes, you know, go back in and, and, and continue to layer. It doesn't, um, you know, preclude you, you know, once you've gamsol you're done. Nope, you can go back in and uh, tweak it until you're happy. And then you can go right back in with your Gamsol and blend out the uh, little uh, revisions that you made. 
All right, that is much, much better. It's a lot more equidistant around the moon. Super, super happy with this. The edges are super dark, and I am loving this. Um, so again, I did mention that we're going to do a technique and a coloring page, and this will be part one. This is the technique. And next week, I will be finishing our sea serpent, which will be the coloring page portion. Um, it's just a little bit too much to do all in one video. It would be, you know, way, way too long. You guys would, you know, never follow along with me for that long. So we're going to do that next week. Um, but in the meantime, I hope that you really enjoyed this video. These are super fun to make these, you know, just kind of you know, new frontier, you know, trying new techniques, you know, really trying to push the envelope, not really knowing how it's going to turn out. These are super fun for me. So if you enjoyed it, please uh, hit that like button uh, and subscribe if you're new. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get your two months of Skillshare absolutely free to the first uh, 500 folks. So check out the link in the description and I will see you guys next time. Take care.